Okay, so here's question number two, foundations of 33.1, types and sets, types of sets and set notation is the title. So we're talking about Venn diagrams, we're talking about um, uh, subsets, we're talking about, um, you know, uh, mutually exclusive or disjoint sets, that sort of thing. So number two says, draw a Venn diagram, so that's going to be a series of circles, right, um, to represent these sets. So the universal set is going to be the natural numbers from 1 to 40. So natural numbers are just like counting numbers, right? So no decimals, no fractions, nothing like that. From 1 to 40. Okay. So universal set. So let's see. Let's do this down here. I'm going to make a big square for the universal set. And it's going to be U. Okay. So a big square, usually that's where you start. And then the circles and stuff are inside. If you want to do a big circle outside, that's totally great too. But you'll see in the textbook a lot of times it's a square. Okay, so E uh, is the multiples of 8. Okay, so when we're talking about multiples, that is 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, and so on. Right? 2, and then 40, so inclusive. So these are the numbers that have to go in E. All right, so let's make, so we've got E, F, and S. Okay, so let's, we're going to make three circles. And so I'm going to make one big circle here, and I'm going to put those numbers in. 8, 16, 24, 32, and 40. Okay? Let's just start there. As we build this Venn diagram, we may have to shift those numbers around a little bit, but you'll see that in a second. So F now is multiples of 4. Oh, okay. So multiples of 4, and I would suggest you list them just like I did here. 4, 8, um, maybe you don't have to list all of them, but 4, 8, uh, 12, 16, and and so on, right? So here we're going. All right. So multiples of fours. That's four times one, four times two, four times three, four times four, and so on. All the way up to, and we'll stop at 40, right? Okay, so what you notice here, you're gonna, you want to make a, a Venn diagram here, but what I notice is that we have some overlap here, don't we? We have some elements that are in both sets, okay? So let's do this. Um, oh, I didn't label this one. Sorry. This one should be E. So I'm going to do F in a different color. And I'm going to have to overlap a little bit. Okay. So I know that 40 is only in, in oh, 40, sorry. 40 was in both lists. I didn't circle it. Sorry. 40 is in both lists. So guess what? 40 goes in the overlap region there between those four. And I might run out of room here. <laughs> Hopefully you made yours a bit bigger. But, uh, okay, so now we have to think. Look at 16. Okay, here's 16, and it has to go actually in the overlap part. So I'm going to take it out of this part that says it's only an E. And you don't need to use commas either, really. So 16 has to go in there. 8 also has to go in there. And 24 and 32 need to go in there. Okay. So it looks like all of the ones in the first set have to go in this overlap part. Right? Everyone see that? So you may have to kind of adjust, right? Okay, I'm going to have to adjust here. But the bottom line is, is that... Now, is there, are there any other numbers that are outside of that? Should I be drawing the circle like this? Or what's another way that I could do that? Because of, oh, I don't know, let's see some other questions here. Look at this one. Is it, is it looking like this E is actually a subset of F? You see that? There's no numbers that would go in here. None. So, look at, this is what we've come across here now. I'm going to leave those numbers in there. I've got to put uh, 16, we've got to put 24, i got to put 32 in there. And you know what? This red circle actually completely envelops this one. You see that? And yeah, just like what we did here, um, all of these numbers for multiples of 8 go inside there. Now, we do have to figure out where to put the rest of these F ones. Okay, so 4 is, is not in E, but 4 should be out here. Right? And 12. 12 needs a home. So that's going to go in this part. 20 is not a multiple of 8, but it's a multiple of 4, you see? 28 and 36. Everyone kind of understand how I'm doing that? And yours may look a little bit different. Mine 
Mine looks a little awkward, actually. It looks silly. But it's doing the trick. Okay, what else? Um, we need to fit one more in here. Multiples of 17. Okay, so I'm going to stop here before I have to erase too much. Multiples of 17 between 17 and 40. So what are those? Uh, let's write them down here. So we got 17, we got 34, uh, and then that's it, isn't it? Okay, so let's take a look. Do 17 and 34 already exist here anywhere? Uh, no. No, they don't. So 17 and 34 are going to go out here, and they're going to be a separate set. This is going to be S. Okay. So is everyone with me there so far? Does that make sense? Okay. So you may have to do some erasing. Obviously, you know, I did that just like you might do that. So that's okay. But it's, it's important that you realize that E is a subset of F. See, all this, these are all inside this bigger subset. And then this right here, S, is actually a disjoint set with... F and with E. So, um, I don't think there's a notation. Is there a notation for disjoint sets? Actually, I don't think so. I think you just have to list them. So, for B, disjoint sets are going to be S and F and S and E, right? They don't have anything in common with each other. So, I guess you could list those two sets of disjoint sets. That makes sense? Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to C then. It, is each statement true or false? Okay, explain. All right, so this notation, remember this sideways U, right? This means E is a subset of F. Is E completely inside of F? Yes. And your explanation might be just that. E circle is inside F or all of E elements are also all in F. Something like that. Okay, is F a subset of E? Is F a subset of E? Well, that is a no, right? Okay, because there are elements in F not in E. There are some elements in F that are not in E. Is this, is this making sense, guys? Okay. Okay, so this next one's a bit strange. Is E a subset of E? Is E a subset of itself? Well, what's the definition of a subset? Can we go back there? Let's see. Where is a subset? Oh, right here. A set whose elements all belong to another set. For example, the set of all. Blah, 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 blah. Set notation is written as O. Oh, okay, element. Well, does it fit that definition? Um, I, that's a bit strange, isn't it? I don't know. Is E a subset of E? All of these elements, are they a subset of another set? Well, if, if, if another set has to be a different set, I don't know, you might argue no. Um, are all of the elements in E also in E? Yes. So you can argue this both ways. I don't know. So it's a little funny. But I would say yes. Um, I would say yes. All of the elements in E are also in E. <laughs> But it's good for us to think about that, right? To go back to the definition. Um, I, I, I come across words all the time. It's like, you know, I think this is, I think I know what this means. Well, let's look it up. Let's go back to the definition and just make sure, right? Or my, my wife asked me, hey, what does this word mean? I was like, you know, I think I know what it means, but let's go to the dictionary and find out. So, I mean, it's good to look back to the definition and just clarify things. Okay, let's keep going here. Two more. Is F prime equal to the odd numbers from 1 to 40? Okay, well that's an interesting question. So here's F. F prime would be everything that's not in F. Right? It's everything that's outside of that F um, set, F circle. So does, is it equal to the odd numbers from 1 to 40? Well, I think it's pretty... Uh, well, uh, let's, let's think about that now. So the numbers that we haven't put on our diagram, right? Because the universal set is the numbers from 1 to 40. So the numbers that aren't in these three circles really, I guess, really should be in this Venn diagram, shouldn't they? So one should be there, two should be there, three should be there, four is, oh, did I not write down four? Oh, I did, right there, sorry, it's in red, Ooh, can't see it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, what about six? Six, okay, and so on. 
seven, okay, at, you know, I won't finish writing them, but all of those numbers should be in the universal set, just not in one of those circles, right? So this says, is everything that's not f, is that equal to all the odd numbers? Well, everything that's not f, so I'll just do this for a moment, is everything that's outside of this. And you know what? There's an even number, there's an even number. So is f prime equal to just odd numbers? No. Okay. No. And you might say, so you say no, and you might say uh, there are even numbers that are not an f. Simple. Okay. So finally, the last question in this one, is this, or sorry, in this example, the set of natural numbers from 41 to 50 is, and this is the empty set, remember? So the set of natural numbers from 41 to 50 is blank, or is empty. So in this example, remember the universal set is 1 to 40. So are there any elements in here from 41 to 50? Hannah? Well, 44, yeah, 44 is in this, but is 44 considered in you? Is 44 in here anywhere? Yeah, wouldn't it be in, like, the sets of F? 40, well, remember, this, let's go back to what the original question says it's up here. The universal set, so this example is we're only considering numbers from 1 to 40. So 44 is beyond that. You see? So it's actually not in U. So are there any elements in U that satisfy this, 41 to 50? No, there's none. Okay? So then this would be true. Okay? So this would be yes or true. I guess it's supposed to be true or false. So yes, true. Because, and you would say that the reasoning might be because the numbers considered in this example range from 1 to 40. That's it. 44 is not considered. 41 to 50. Okay? Alright, so that's number two. A full explanation of number two. Hopefully that clears up some things for you.